Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Forgive my horrible sounding voice. I am right in the middle of a horrible chest cold and it's, as usual, taking it out on my voice. So I just, I sound disgusting. Um, but I have a video done and it needs a voiceover and I wish I could bring someone else to do it, but there's actually nobody else around today. So anyway, I am using Simon Says Stamps Wake Up and Make Up stamp set. And I am making cards that were my initial thoughts. The minute I looked at this set, I knew what I wanted to create with it. So I am stamping the lipstick images from the set onto um, the smooth side of Distress watercolor paper. And I'm using Versafine's Claire Nocturne ink for this. And after they're stamped, I'm going to do some very simple watercoloring and I'm using Distress Oxide reinkers for my watercoloring. Um, for the actual lipstick images themselves, you could use anything. It wouldn't have to be these. You could, you know, smush ink pads like I usually do. Um, use regular watercolors, whatever you want. But I specifically want these for the backgrounds, which I'll get to in a minute. But because again, these are Distress Oxides, they need to be shaken up really, really well because in the bottles, the pigments will settle and you want to shake them up whether you're doing something like this or whether you're actually re-inking your ink pads. You want to shake them really, really, really well. So I shook them up and I'm working on my waffle flower water media mat because it's perfect, especially with things like this. So I can just put, you know, drops of the color into the little wells here. And I don't have all of the reinkers. Shocker, I know. I'm working my way to getting all of them because I use the distress oxide so much, it's worth having the reinkers. Um, but I just pulled out the colors I did have that would work really well for lipstick colors. So I have um, dried marigold, rusty hinge, fire brick, festive berries, worn lipstick, and Victorian velvet. And like I said, very simple watercoloring. I'm literally just picking up the color with a wet paintbrush. I'm just using a little ranger brush here and painting them onto the actual like lipstick area. And then I'm going to kind of be going back and forth because I was all over the place when I was making these. I just um, didn't finish one step at a time like I normally do with cards. I'm just all over the place. So I pulled out more distressed watercolor paper and I'm going to create my backgrounds with these rankers. And I'm using a flat brush this time. It's still from the ranger, little ranger pack. This is like a half inch wide flat brush. And <laughs> I start out okay. You can tell by the end, especially when I turn this like upright, because I'm just, I'm painting towards me. Um, I, can't, I can't paint a straight line to save my life. Uh, the idea in my head was great. And then I, by the time I get to the very end, I was like, this is so crooked, but I make it work anyway. Because I just, yeah, I'm fighting a cold while I was making this, you know, like the energy was very low. So no redoing, no, no take backsies. I'm going to make it work. So I'm literally just picking up the color and something what, what I really noticed because I hadn't used the reinkers before like to paint with or to do anything with yet. And just the the creaminess of them, like the way these stripes painted, I was like, man, I, I want to do some more backgrounds with these because they're just fun. And so I did the one and then obviously I have tons of ink still left over just from those drops. So I did a kind of scribbly, scribbly watercolory whatever you want to call it, background. Um, just picking up the colors and getting them on the background. That's all I did. Using that same brush. And then I, I, I pulled a Christina Warner and kind of splattered some water, like sprayed water into my hand and was kind of flicking it. I'm still, I can't do it very well. She has this way of doing it that just, she makes the perfect little like water droplets, but I usually end up with just a splat of water. But with this, I wasn't worried about a perfect background. So I'm splatting water on it and doing whatever and moving things around and I'm, I'm just letting it do its thing because they're oxide inks and they just react so nicely with water and this background I wanted to be messy. So after I was done kind of playing with that, um, I pulled out weathered wood, um, my Distress Oxide reinker, put a little tiny drop of that and then I'm going to paint all the like, well you can do kind of whatever you want with these. That's also the beauty of this set. These sorts of images, like you can paint them whatever colors you want, like you can do whatever you want. So in my mind, I was thinking kind of classic makeup packaging. So, you know, the silver metal and then the black plastic packaging. So I used the weathered wood reinker to paint all those areas. And I watered this one down a little bit more just so it wasn't as intense. And then once I got that painted, I don't have um, the black soot reinker because that's 
just out of habit what I would have used. But since I don't have it, I just took my black soot oxide ink pad and just smushed kind of the edge of it against my little water media mat here and then picked that up with a paintbrush. So you can do whatever and you could use regular distress inks for this. Any like water reactive dye ink would work as well. So use that. Painted all of the um, rest of the images with all of the uh, black soot oxide ink. I can't, I, it's getting to the point I literally can't talk. My brain and my mouth are not communicating very well. Uh, <laughs> so wiped up the black soot so I don't get that all over everything. And then I went back to these backgrounds because I wasn't done because I need splatter, obviously. And because again, I still have a bunch of ink left. So I was just kind of picking up the inks with my paintbrush and kind of splattering them onto my background, just kind of letting it do its thing. And then with the striped background, before splattering any ink, I actually just splattered water with my paintbrush, let that sit for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, and then pick it up with a paper towel. So then you get that great, you know, splatter water effect that I just love with the distress inks. And then of course added more splatter with the reinkers because it's there and it needs to be done. So I kept the splatter fairly light though, especially on this background because you know, it's more about the stripes and whatnot. I was thinking kind of lipstick swatches is what my, that's what I was going for, just very crooked ones. So <laughs> afterwards, um, I pulled out some liquid. This is liquid pixie dust from Incon 3. I've used this in another video. It's basically just like pure liquid shimmer. And it, just like the oxides, it needs to be shaken up really, really, really well to get that shimmer kind of dispersed. And part of me was like, oh, I could have done this step way on earlier. Like I could have mixed it with the black soot, but because these are oxides, I don't think the shimmer would have come through as well because the oxides are more opaque. So doing it as a last step, I would still recommend it with this. If you're using something more um, transparent, like regular distress inks or regular watercolor, you can mix the liquid pixie dust in with that and it turns it shimmery. Or you can do like I'm doing here and just paint it on top of whatever you've worked on. Just always remember that if you're painting it on top of anything like this, like a distress oxide or a distress ink or anything like that, um, it will reactivate. So just to be aware of that. I knew that was gonna happen. It kind of reactivated a little bit, but that's the whole point. So I was fine with it. So I painted all of that. Once it was dry, I turned the flashlight on on my phone so you guys can see that shimmer because, you know, a lot of times the camera doesn't pick it up because of the way the lighting is. But yeah, they are super shimmery because even though I went with classic package coloring, who doesn't love glittery packaging? <laughs> so I painted that and then I ended up die cutting all of those with the coordinating die set and they're all set aside. And then I'm gonna work on my sentiments, which are all from the same stamp set. Love the sentiments in this set. Like the, I really love the fonts too. I just, we need more. We need more sets like this, more sets with sentiments with these fonts. I just, I'm all over it. So I'm stamping onto black cardstock with Simon's clear embossing ink. And I'm using um, Simon's detail white embossing powder. I mentioned, I think it was my just my last video. Um, I've put my white embossing powder into one of these Systema containers, just like Jennifer McGuire. So far, I'm liking it for this. I wouldn't do it for all my embossing powders, but because I use so much white embossing powder, I'm, I'm liking this. We'll see. We'll see. It's working. So coated all those sentiments with that white embossing powder, melted all of them with my heat tool, and another shocker, I did not use my sentiment labels to die cut these like I normally do. I actually managed to stamp all these sentiments straight, which is funny because lately I haven't been able to stamp things straight to save my life. I can't paint a straight line, obviously, but I stamped all the sentiments straight. So I just trimmed them with my paper trimmer. <laughs> it's funny sometimes how that works. So trimmed everything down with my Tim Holtz uh, little guillotine paper trimmer. Somebody was asking about this recently, like what I think about this trimmer. It's awesome. I show it in almost every single video. I've been using it since I don't even know how long. Um, a long time now. I got it forever ago. And this is a great trimmer. I absolutely love it. It's just, it's so convenient. I have this one and I have the big one too. I just don't show the big one in videos because I'm literally using it on my lap most of the time. Um, and it takes up too much space. So I keep that like kind of off to the side, but I use both the tonic big one and this one, and they're just fabulous. So I trimmed down my sentiments. I trimmed down both of these backgrounds just a little bit because I know I knew by this point that I was going to um, adhere these onto cardstock bases of a contrasting color. 
And then I kind of figured out my layouts and whatnot. And once I was happy with those, I'm just adhering everything with thin 3D foam squares. So it just pops them up just that little bit, gives it that little bit of dimension, but not too bulky. So I'm going to adhere everything with the thin 3D foam squares, as well as using some craft tacky glue as I get everything kind of adhered into place. And then both of these backgrounds, I am going to cover the back of them with Simon's Big Mama foam tape because they're a little bit warped from the um, watercoloring and whatnot. Plus, again, I like the, <laughs> I find like a Big Mama foam tape. The name makes you think it's going to be like really bulky foam tape. It's just the roll itself is massive. And I'm going to actually show in an upcoming haul video just how big the roll is when you first get it. Um, but the foam tape itself is thin. And I like that because it gives it just the right amount of dimension without it being way too thick of a card. So I coated the back of uh, the backgrounds with that, put them onto my card bases, which is Simon's Smoke Gray cardstock. And then the remaining little lipstick images and the smaller sentiments I'm adhering onto the inside of the card, just to finish off the insides, of course. And then as a last little bit of bling, I am using some of Simon's Moonstone sequins. And I don't often cut sequins apart, but I'm literally running out of these sequins. I think this is like the first sequin pack that I'm actually like very close to using up because I have a ton of sequins. Um, but the big ones I cut in half so that I could kind of tuck because I would normally tuck them under, you know, the sentiments, etc. anyways. So because I have so few of them left, I just cut them in half and then would, you know, butt them up against the sentiments, etc. So it looks like they're tucked under, but you know, you get more bang for your buck that way. So cut those in half and then adhered everything into place with Simon's Craft Tacky glue and my jewel picker. And that's going to finish off the cards. So I will have links as always to um, all the supplies used. I'll have a link to my blog post if you want to check that out. All that info will be in the description box below the video. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching. Apologies again for my <laughs> scratchy, weird sounding voice. And I hope to see you all very soon in another video and hopefully I'm not sounding quite so ridiculous. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.